There are two popular fingering approaches to the bass. So one is the one finger per fret method and the other is a three finger method. So we're gonna look at both of those and then talk about which one you might choose. First, what do I mean by a fingering method? Well, a fingering method is just a system of assigning your fingers to a group of frets in one area of the fretboard. So having a system is important because you're trying to develop a musical reflex of playing notes. So the more random your approach is, the longer it takes to develop that reflex. So we'll be discussing this more in later lessons, but to access every note of the musical alphabet in a particular region or position on the fretboard requires a span of five frets. So most bass lines won't use all five of those frets, but some will. So your fingering method needs to account for a five fret span. A common fingering method is to use one finger per fret. So you use four fingers across the span of four frets. I guarantee that that's gonna seem impossible at first. So every student has always thought, there's no way I can do that. But after a few weeks of practice, it, it starts to happen. Your fingers start to stretch and get more limber. It's just that you've never done this with your hands before. And with a one finger per fret method, you're still short one fret of that complete five fret range that I mentioned. So when you need a note outside of the four frets, what you're gonna do is not stretch or reach like this with your finger, but instead you'll shift your entire hand over a fret. One thing to realize about the one finger per fret approach is that your hand doesn't need to be stretched constantly in a claw hovering over the fretboard. So a lot of times you can relax your hand and expand it as you need to. So it's kind of like an accordion. So in my mind, I know if I need this note, I would use my first finger. If I need this note, I would use the second, third, and then fourth. But if I'm just playing with my fourth finger here, then my fingers can relax Come together. Now another common approach is to use three fingers instead of four. So you use your first, second, and fourth fingers. So you don't use your third finger at all. Now how would you play across five frets? Well you have to do a little bit more shifting to be able to get all five frets. So you have first finger, first finger, second, fourth, fourth. People have been debating whether or not to use the three finger technique or four finger technique for a very long time. And there's not a clear answer. So the problem comes from this, that the electric bass married two instruments together that have very different techniques. So it married the double bass, the big upright bass, and the electric guitar. And the double bass has a very long scale length of about 41 and a half inches or so. And what that means is scale length is the distance from the nut to the bridge. And the longer that scale length is, the further apart the notes fall. So that makes stretching harder and harder as the scale length gets longer. And then guitar has a scale length of about 25 inches or so. And uh, the problem is that the electric bass falls right in the middle of that at 34 inches. So everybody's debating whether or not uh, we should use the double bass technique of three fingers or if we should use the electric guitar technique of four fingers. 
One part of the debate is hand injuries. So a lot of people say that the extra stretch of the one finger per fret uh, method uh, leads to hand injuries. So I've looked at a lot of studies because I'm obsessed with musician health, uh, and I haven't seen anything that specifically suggests that stretching is the issue. Uh, what's more common is just the forceful repetition uh, of playing, of pressing the strings. And the fact is, is that double bass players with using the three finger technique and electric guitar players using the four finger technique both get hand injuries. So uh, we can't rule out that it's the stretching, uh, but there are other factors in play as well. So uh, I think if you work on that very, very light touch uh, of just barely pressing the string or touching the string to the fret, uh, that's going to go a long way to good health. Of the two techniques, my preference is the one finger per fret technique. Now, I like it because that extra finger is a big advantage, and what you'll find is a lot of musical patterns that happen on the bass fit very nicely into a four fret space. So that means you're gonna to have to do much less shifting around uh, with four fingers versus three. But I will find that I jump between those two uh, quite often that uh, if I'm on these, on these lower frets, and I know that I can get away with using the three finger technique, that's exactly what I'll do. Uh, but as you improvise, and if you don't know what you're gonna play from one second to the next, then having that extra finger is a big advantage. So my suggestion is to start with the four finger technique uh, and really get that down. Uh, and then if you feel like you want to or need to, uh, try doing the three finger technique. So it's much easier to go from four fingers down to three than it is to go from three to four. In the beginning, everybody has trouble reaching across four frets. I don't think I've had a student yet that hasn't had trouble with it. So what I suggest is start out on the higher frets where they're closer together. That's going to be much easier at first. And then after a few days, move down a fret. And then a few days more, move down a fret again. And so on. As your fingers start to get more comfortable with it.